This week, we marked a sombre anniversary, a year since we entered lockdown. It was an unprecedented act of collective sacrifice for collective well-being, and we know the impact that the pandemic has had on ourselves and on each of our fellow citizens. It's touched every aspect of our lives. So many lives lost, so many important moments forgone, and so many businesses impacted. But there is hope on the horizon. Vaccines developed at record speed by global teams of scientists are being deployed at a phenomenal rate by our NHS. There's a light at the end of the tunnel and that light is getting brighter and brighter every day with every vaccine. But as we emerge from lockdown, we face choices. Choices about the kind of country we want to be. Choices about who we trust to lead that recovery and choices about the values that should underpin our decisions. We've come through the most challenging of times together and we've got to rebuild together, looking ahead with a shared ambition to use all that we have and all that we are to be a more just country, a fairer country, a more prosperous country. Our economic recovery lies at the very heart of our ambitions. It's the strength of our economy, the wealth of our natural resources and the ingenuity of our people that will power Scotland's recovery. In the last year, we've used all our resources and more to support businesses from the small fishing boat in Kyle to the hotel in Dumfries. Small and medium sized businesses are the backbone of the Scottish economy. They create the jobs. They keep the communities going. They are the entrepreneurs and the pioneers. They are the drivers of economic prosperity. And that's why we put in place three billion pounds of financial support in Scotland to act as a lifeline, much of it unavailable elsewhere. We tried to reach as many of the excluded groups as possible. The newly self-employed and the sole traders, the hairdressers and the driving instructors, the soft play centres and the brewers. These businesses display the best of Scotland and we've used every penny at our disposal to reach as many as possible so that none are forgotten who could have been supported. As we emerge from lockdown, we won't stop offering support as the only government in the four nations to offer 100% non-domestic rates reliefs for a full year for various sectors and reducing the rates poundage so that businesses can protect jobs and recover. A re-elected SNP government will put the creation and the protection of good green jobs right at the heart of our economic policy. We'll continue the National Transition Training Fund, providing support to anybody facing redundancy or in unemployment to retrain in areas of growth. Just as responding to COVID-19 has been a collective effort, so economic recovery must also be a national endeavour, empowering everybody to play their part. There has been a disproportionate impact on certain groups, on women and on young people, and our election commitments recognise that. Too few women get the help they need to start out in business. And so we will create a women's business centre backed by £50 million of investment over the next parliament to help create, to grow and to develop the next generation of women-led businesses. We also know the pandemic has had a stark impact on the job prospects of our young people. Through our Young Persons Guarantee, we will ensure that every 18 to 24 year old is given an opportunity of a job an apprenticeship, education, training or volunteering. We'll make it easier and more affordable for them to get to work by expanding concessionary travel to everybody under the age of 22. And in recognition of the impact COVID has had on the lives and the opportunities for young people, particularly those entering the jobs market for the first time, we will increase the age at which young people become eligible to pay council tax, raising it from 18 to 21 years old. 
For a young person living alone in a band B property, that will mean an annual saving of around £750. In a few short weeks, the people of Scotland will go to the polls to choose their government. The next session of the Scottish Parliament will be crucial to Scotland's recovery. Some people might say we should put economic recovery before independence, but you can't have one without the other. For a strong, robust green recovery, we need independence. Why? Well, because quite simply, we know what happened last time the Tories were in charge of economic recovery. After the crash of 2008, the Tories embarked on a decade of austerity, balancing the books on the backs of the most vulnerable in society. In fact, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, is on record as saying that austerity was absolutely right. That's the austerity that delivered the bedroom tax, the undignified welfare system, the painfully slow economic growth and low levels of productivity. And Labour offer no hope for a change of direction at Westminster. Austerity will undermine economic recovery. It will deepen inequalities. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be that way. Scotland has all the natural wealth, the talent, the ingenuity and the resilience to do things better. Our ambitions should be bigger than just mitigating the Tories' economic incompetence and brutal welfare policies, and they are. But be in no doubt, because without the powers of independence, it will be a Tory government that undermines our recovery. Our country is rich. It's rich with natural resources, which drives economic growth and raises revenue for our public services. Take our internationally renowned food and drink sectors, grown by our farmers and crofters, caught by our fishermen, distilled by the experts. From whiskey to seafood, we're home to world-class produce. In the last 10 years, we've seen exponential growth in our exports, valued at £6.3 billion. Yet exports have been stymied and seafood has rotted as it waited to cross the channel to European customers. Scotland didn't vote for that. Scotland didn't vote for a Brexit that's harming our global exports, creating layers of bureaucracy and costing us jobs. Or take our wind and our rain, which is powering Scotland. Just this week, it was announced that our renewable energy met 97% of Scotland's electricity demand last year. That compares with only 25% in 2010. Our wind and our water are keeping the lights on. Our renewable energy output has quadrupled in the last 10 years. That's enough power for the equivalent of nearly 9 million households. Alongside the obvious energy benefits, there are the financial benefits too. Onshore revenues continue to grow in Scotland, rising by over a billion pounds in 1920. With the need to decarbonise the way we travel and heat our homes, there's potential to unleash even more of Scotland's immense renewables potential, driving green growth and creating thousands of jobs. But that potential is being curtailed by Westminster energy policy, where a wind farm in Scotland will face a hefty bill for each unit of power exported to the grid. Similar producers elsewhere in the UK are paid for the privilege. We've got the resources, but our potential is thwarted. Westminster rule working against the creation of jobs and investment in the renewable sector in Scotland, holding us back. When you hear the Tories talk about the broad shoulders of the union, remember this, it isn't international aid. Scots pay tax too, but we only get it back when the Tories decide to spend it. So every time they crow about how much they're spending in Scotland, remember, we have a right to see our taxes spent in Scotland on the priorities that are important to the people of Scotland, not the priorities of Boris Johnson. Infrastructure investment is one of the key levers at our disposal, and we will use our spending power to drive a robust 
green recovery. Central to this will be continuing the delivery of the National Infrastructure Mission. Our plan to boost annual infrastructure by 1% of GDP by the end of the next Parliament. That will deliver total investment valued at over £33 billion in the next five years, supporting 45,000 jobs in that period and providing benefits right across the Scottish supply chain. Our capital spending review published in February set out our plans for infrastructure, including £2 billion for new schools, £1.2 billion in major rail improvements and over half a billion pounds in our city and region deal programme. And if we elected, we'll go further. To inject confidence in our economy, to create jobs and to deliver infrastructure that works for households and businesses, we are committing to an ambitious programme of investment. Firstly, we'll embark on a 10-year programme to deliver 100,000 affordable homes with 70,000 for social rent, ensuring that everybody has a safe, warm home. Secondly, we'll establish a £100 million digital boost scheme to support small businesses to become fully digitalised and access the benefits and productivity gains of the digital economy. Thirdly, will launch a national challenge competition, providing funding of up to £50 million to the project with the greatest potential to transform Scotland's economy. And fourthly, we'll invest an additional £500 million over the next Parliament to create new, good, green jobs to support people to start and grow a business and to reskill for the jobs of the future. Lastly, and an important one in my part of the world. Jobs go hand in hand with population retention. And so, to encourage people to move to the Highlands and to support entrepreneurs that are here already, we will create a new £20 million Rural Entrepreneur Fund, providing grants of up to £10,000 to support the creation of 2,000 new businesses here in the Highlands. I said at the outset that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. That light is getting brighter and brighter and we will face choices. As we emerge from lockdown, I'm sure that each of us is dreaming, dreaming about hugging our friends and family, visiting our relatives, reopening our businesses. As a country, we should be ambitious about our collective future too. Scotland's economic recovery is at the heart of our ambitions and we will commit to using every penny and every power at our disposal to invest in this country and to support businesses to create jobs. But the bottom line is this, despite all the many strengths of the Scottish economy, we need the full levers of control if we really want to be more prosperous, more just and fairer. On the 6th of May, the people of Scotland will have a choice that will reject austerity and invest in our economy, in our NHS and in our public services, and a government that will give the people the opportunity to choose independence and put Scotland's future, Scotland's recovery in Scotland's hands. Scotland, we've got the people, we've got the resources. The only thing we don't have is the independence to deliver our ambitions.